pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you please remain standing for a moment of silence for the sick, handicapped, departed, and especially the military personnel of this community and the veterans of Here. Nina Petrocelli Sr. Virginia Schneider? Here. Mayor Betty Copeland? Here. Solicitor Thomas Diamond? Here. Engineer Kevin Brett? Here. Manager Lori Collins? Here. Assistant to the Borough Manager Cheryl Ward? Here. Police Chief Chad King? Fire Chief Ray Hussein? Southbridge EMS Dan Nolan? Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for uh, running very, very good meetings, Mr. President. Uh, the community has been uh, well served uh, by your presence, and I thank you for what you've done. I appreciate it. Uh, the Planning Commission. One of the things the council tried to do to get the planning commission to be meeting was to expand it to seven. Regretfully, that does not appear to have solved the problem. When I came here last month, I was aware of the fact that the planning commission was again not meeting, but it should meet. Even if it doesn't have a quorum, even if it doesn't have something on its agenda, it should meet. If there is no body that can deliberate the things that need to be accomplished in our community, in a, how, can we, how can we plan? How can we do something? Again, I, I think that the impediment is that when there is an excuse or a reason for it not to meet, it doesn't. Perhaps in this new year, I presume it's going to meet at the end of November, because it only has one more meeting left this year, right? Uh, or December. First, what, Monday December. first Monday of December is the November and December meeting, right, yes. Lori? Yes. Hey, could we make it that in the new year, the Planning Commission will meet at least once a month? And if there are no members, if there's not a quorum, that those members who are there will at least show up? That there will at least be some meeting, even if there is not a quorum? That would be very much appreciated. Uh, the, uh, the other item I wanted to mention is as we come into budget, we can look at our community and our regional problems. I mentioned that there is no... <laughs> Many of us look to the completion of the bridge near Midas and Rite Aid. Uh, that is a very, very important project for our community and for the region. Unfortunately, our budget, in my opinion, does not lend itself to the expenditure of 400 and, how many dollars, Lord? 488,000? 48. 488,000. 2, 288 for Tartier Street, and 300,000 GDF grant, and then 200 more for the bridge. Exactly. I am not suggesting that we eliminate everything. But I am suggesting that we reduce the amount of Bridgewell's contribution to this regional effort and look towards Pendant, Upper St. Clair, and others to come forth. This is a regional project on a regional road that benefits a region. South Fayette is putting forth their part. I understand that Bridgeville committed to do this. Okay. We committed prior to the flood. 
You know, I understand that there's money that is coming in to help us from the region or from the, the county. At the same time, 488000 is a lot of our tax dollars to go for a regional road. Those are the, uh, the two items. I thank you very much and hope to see you at the budget meeting. Uh, Nicholas Krzyzewski. Good evening. My name is Nicholas Krzyzewski. I live at 734 Maple Street. I want to thank you all for being here this evening. My twin sister and I have lived in this community for 25 years. About five years ago, we started a fundraiser for our birthday. A campaign we've done, we've put in local businesses. This year, it's going to be a food can drive. We put boxes that say believe, joy, hope, and peace in several locations all throughout the community. This, all this food goes to the Bridgewell Area Food Bank. It will run from today until December 8th. If you're interested in donating, locate the pickups are Rail Yard Grown Tavern, Park to Soul Hair Salon, The Sun Club, Crafty Jackalope, The Owls Club on Baldwin Street, The Italian Club on Baldwin Street, Dash Dance Production, a new company on Baldwin Street, formerly Kathy's Dance Studio, Maestro's, 31, Ragtop, our police station, our borough building right outside here, there's one box already, and at our local library. If you guys can please do, we appreciate it. And thank you and have a wonderful holiday. Thanks, Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Uh, I'll try it, please. Hi, thank you. It's, uh, I feel like I congratulate Lori on recovering from her problem. She recovers. The courage that you demonstrated to even go through the procedure is remarkable. And you have my best wishes. At any rate, I, two things I wanted to talk about tonight. Um, I called our assistant manager today to see if there was a regulation that I think I talked, I think I talked to the council about or maybe it was the planning committee or the parking authority, I don't remember. But uh, I was trying to find out if there is a, a regulation in the community that anybody that builds a building in the central business district doesn't have to provide parking for the business district, which there's a situation uh, here that I'm really nervous about. That's obviously, uh, this is the corner of Washington Avenue and Station Street. This is the uh, section of the railroad that was purchased by the owners of this company. This is the Dream property. By the way, this drawing is a, it was made by, I guess, Borough Council or the uh, parking authority showing a 50, uh, a 50 car parking lot uh, in that area. What, I'm getting back to the, the borough statute. Uh, I, I discovered yeah, that. I'll just be clear. Uh, it wasn't borough council that did that drawing. I don't know where that came from. What? Well, that's the parking authority. Yeah, it was parking authority. Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, just, just for clarification. Yeah, I, I just noticed that. That's right. The thing that, that I'm concerned about is the regulation, I think it's in Chapter 4. You're probably familiar with uh, I'm not very many other people were. It essentially said if the party that buys this piece of land wants to put a building on it, if it's within 600 feet of any other public parking space, they're allowed to do, excuse me, they're allowed to build it there and not provide one parking space. Uh, the distance between uh, this piece of land and the uh, parking lot next to the former uh, PNC bank is less than 600, and I'm almost certain the distance between <clears throat> this corner of the property and the uh, parking lot is less than 600. I think the regulation states that it would be up to Borough Council to grant a variance or a non-compliance, in other words, to decide whether you should make the property owner build the parking necessary for the size of the floor space in the building or not. I think that, excuse me, I think that's a, a very, uh, let, let me tell you what the outcome could be. Someone could build a building there, and I've been told that that's the intention of the property owner. <clears throat> okay? Uh, it doesn't have to be, have a retail store. It can be entirely <clears throat> for 40 uh, business executives that could require, <clears throat> excuse me, 40 parking spaces. They would purchase 40 parking spaces from either this parking lot or the combination of both, which means the available uh, empty parking spaces that are there for the businesses that are surrounding both of those parking lots 
would be great, get, greatly diminished. Uh, well, you said you heard that somebody wants to put a building there? Yes. Or, I, I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, this is the first I've heard about it. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was an accountant that told me, and I guess they're connected in some way. I, I really don't want to. As you move forward, just, we have been in contact with the property owners of the building on the corner. The Arco Realty Building, yes. yes. Um, many times regarding that lot. They leased it for three years. Yes. And now they purchased it. Yeah, about and five their, months ago. Yes. And their intent always was to accommodate their building with more parking. And they had met with us regarding criteria to put in a lot. So just so you know, that's what we know about that. So as far as I know, there's no intention to build a building. Now. Well, that's that's good news. But I was going to say, if, if you do make any sort of arrangement with the property owner to use that area as, to build a parking lot like this for themselves and maybe their neighbors, um, you, you should make sure that it involves a contract that that can never be changed. Because of a, a great uh, uh, introduction would be to attract, convince you guys to, to let them use the property for a parking lot, and then and three years later, turn it into a, a building that will screw up a whole central business district. I just want to mention what you already know. This is the last vacant piece of, excuse me, uh, real estate in the central business district. And I think borough officials, whether it's the parking authority or borough council or together, we should, no, we should purchasing on that property. And I just wanted to, uh, I think that's the way the property could be turned into a, uh, a, a parking the back so these buildings could be turned into retail stores. It would be a very important economic move for the community. The other thing I wanted to mention to you was, <coughs> excuse me, and I guess this is, uh, you know, it, my, my thing is to expand, to make the virtual business district accessible to traffic consumer motors and have enough parking so that we can be competitive with the business districts on each side of the community. We don't have to be as big to, to make a great deal of money for the borough. And the, the other part of uh, a plan, this is the Baldwin Street area again. This is Fire Hill Road and this is Baldwin Street. And this is just one of the proposals. I think the, the young lady that you guys hired to solve the problem <clears throat> wanted to transfer the, this whole area into a water retention plan, and part of her plan, part of her program was to make Baldwin Street the main street. And this proposal simply does more than that. <clears throat> it makes at least Bower Road where it is, and allows Bower Road to two lanes going west <clears throat> by making a the difference in elevation, by the way, from our road to Baldwin Street is only eight feet. And you compare that to the 30-foot differences between Station Street and Washington and some of the other uh, steep slopes that consumers have to, or pedestrians have to walk around, that would be nothing. But at any rate, uh, by doing this, uh, and I think uh, Rory and you guys have been working on <coughs> trying to purchase some of the land, the, 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 the the concept I'm trying to convey here is the area between <clears throat> Baldwin Street and Barter Road and the Baldwin Street and Crick should be turned into a three or four hundred car parking lot. You'd, you'd be able to revive the Bridgeville Business District and the Baldwin Street Business District, I'm sorry, the Baldwin Street Business District, and that business district is fundamentally better than the Washington Avenue Business District, better topography, better access. And, I, and the, the other thing I wanted to mention is it's important. <clears throat> the, the, and I, I've mentioned this a couple times. I think the borough could increase the hundreds of thousands and maybe millions of dollars that we could have donated for us <clears throat> if the improvements we're suggesting are good for the, for the entire area, not just Bridgeville. The traffic congestion solution, uh, and this would be part of it, you have McLaughlin Run, Cook School Road, <clears throat> and Bower Hill Road all coming together here, you would double, you would reduce the traffic congestion by 50% by putting something like this in and connecting it with Washington Avenue. And, and in, in general, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the traffic congestion problem uh, on Washington Avenue, make it so it is good for Collier and Safayette, and I think you can attract 
some major federal agencies and state agencies to give you more money than you think. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thank Thank you. For the time. Uh, John Duncan. <coughs> <coughs> John Duncan from Warren. Uh, I only have three, three quick uh, questions, basically. Um, just wondering if there's any new developments on the grant money for like hillside repair and things like that. My, my street in particular is getting you know, worse and worse all the time. I'm wondering a lot of the tracks. Right. Um, you know, I don't have any official news on grants being awarded yet. Um, they're supposed to make uh, some sort of announcement tomorrow, but I'm not sure. I, I don't know which grants are being awarded. Um, I know we put in, but now I don't even know if it's Kevin. Is that was Warner one of the grants that we applied for? The GDI. For the GDI. Yeah. 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 Um, so I, I, I got to check. So you could ask us tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Um, so we are. What? More supposed to be. Yeah, smart than making up. Okay. Um, the other thing I wondered if anybody knew about um, along my street and down the side alley, they were tagging uh, property pegs with the pink tags all the way up. I don't know if they're surveying for Is it pink natural gas. What's no, the pink just says it's survey. Oh. I didn't know if it was for the construction that's going to be happening or if anybody knew anything. Um, we got a call about that today, okay. and we haven't gotten any notification okay. of, it's not us, right. and, um, and we don't have any projects pending up in that area right hmm. now. I know PennDOT is doing, they're moving forward with, with the, the Charger Street widening and those types of things. Okay, maybe that's what we're we'll, you know, yeah, we'll we'll, yeah, we yeah. all the way down. Okay. Yeah, but we weren't, we weren't aware. Okay. And uh, one more thing is just, uh, is there any plans to make a uh, recycle location to drop up for glass? Oh, for since glass. they don't take it anymore, is that just? The Pennsylvania Resource Council, we talked to them, I talked to them. Yeah. Um, or right after um, they stopped recycling glass. Right. And they, they set up certain areas that you can drop off at certain times of the year. There was one in South Bayette, and I think there was one in Upper St. Clair, and I asked them if Bridgeville could be a drop-off point, and um, they said no because, you know, they had them in our areas. So as we get notification of them holding them, we'll put them on our Facebook page. I was just there at Mount Lebanon uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and they told me, the woman told me, that they are looking to increase the spots, and I said, well, I live in Bridgeville, and she goes, oh, that would be great. So yeah. I don't know whether or not she was just talking off the top of her head, or... It would be pretty for us to call again, because that was in the spring that I requested that, so we'll, you know, we'll call yeah, them again. Okay. It makes it easier for the residents, that's for sure. Okay, all right, that's it, thanks. Thanks, John. Thank uh, Courtney Tolmer, please. Um, just a follow-up from last month's uh, presentation about a proposed uh, tree planting project on Washington Avenue. Um, just to let folks know, I do have the PowerPoint presentation and notes from uh, Kenzie Miller, who was the woman from Tree Pittsburgh. So if anyone would like uh, the original presentation, I do have that um, for folks. Um, so one of the main concerns um, from last month from the presentation was whether or not the tree beds uh, that are currently there would be large enough for planting of uh, what we propose uh, to, to do. So the original plantings uh, were a honey locust tree, which has a very aggressive root system and was planted in a two foot by two foot bed. Um, there were aerial photos online that were taken. So comparing what the current planting situation is, current planting beds are three feet by 10 feet. Um, so basically sidewalk lifting can occur because there originally was not enough room for the trees to grow. Um, there could have been poor construction quality of the sidewalks, but those have since been replaced. Uh, soil moisture, there's lots of things. So 
multiple factors, not just what type of tree, but if there is plenty of room. So just for instance, if you took 18 inches of soil volume for the original plantings with the two by two, that would only give six cubic feet of soil volume, but what the current planting beds will allow is for 45 cubic feet. So there's a huge difference in the um, amount of area for growth for the proposed planting. Um, so there are 28 potential sites on Washington Avenue, and what we would propose is in December or January have the Tree Pittsburgh professionals come out and take a look at each of those specific sites. They're going to do a visual inspection to see if there are electric boxes, water lines, gas lines, gas meters, anything that may impede the healthy growth of these trees. Um, if there is a problem with any of the planting sites, we just won't plant there. Um, what we could do is have a plan B in place and take the trees that they are proposing for this planting and plant them somewhere else that meets a good growth potential um, in Bridgeville. So if there's another area that you would like a tree to be planted and we have those trees available, we can certainly do that. Um, but what the process would be, do the preliminary look at the site to make sure that there's no wires overhead, that it's wide enough to be planted and still have pedestrian access. Um, so that would be up to you as to whether or not you want to move forward with the preliminary um, search of those sites. That would be December or January. And then in January slash February, depending on ground conditions, um, Tree Pittsburgh would then select a species of tree depending on each specific site. So say there's a, a planting bed that's right near an intersection with a lot of traffic, there's lights, uh, you wanna make sure that that tree grows, grows straight and not hanging over where you're gonna have to do a lot of maintenance for making sure that the traffic lights are still visible and, and so it's a successful planting. So that's why they had a variety of species uh, proposed for this project. Again, the trees need to be salt tolerant, they need to be drought tolerant, um, and have less aggressive growth habits than the previous planted trees. So um, the Tree Pittsburgh folks would then, based upon each specific planting site, go and pick the trees that would work for each specific hole that they would be digging. They would lay eyes on the trees, make sure they're healthy, make sure that they have a good, strong root structure, and um, then about a week, it would be seven days, because PA1 fall would fire seven days prior to doing any type of planting or digging, that they need to come and do their test dig and make sure that there's no additional problems with this digging site. If there is, then same situation. If, if they find that a hole is not going to be amenable and it's not gonna be a healthy situation to plant something there, then we could move that tree into the plan B group and put that somewhere else. Um, as far as maintenance, uh, I'm offering to be a volunteer coordinator for any of the maintenance that would take place for these trees, um, which would include um, setting up rotations for watering. Um, during the first two years, a tree needs 20 gallons of water per tree per week. Um, so if there's a drought situation, Tree Pittsburgh notifies you when you need to get out and do watering and things like that. So um, maintenance would be part of part of the package. Um, so one of the other suggestions was using planter boxes in lieu of digging into the ground. So when I brought that up to Tree Pittsburgh, uh, Tree Pittsburgh respectfully declined and said that it is not healthy to plant a tree in a box and you're basically going to wait until the plant the tree dies. So if we decide, if you decide, that you want to move forward by using planting boxes, the tree of Pittsburgh would respectfully remove their offer to put these trees forward to be planted. Um, it's just not something that their organization does or would ever do. 
Um, as far as the cost of the trees, uh, it's about two, it's $250 per tree. So for the 28 trees, it would be $7,000, of which Tree Pittsburgh will provide the tree, the equipment, the stakes, all of the protection for the roots of the tree, and all that we would need to provide would be um, mulch, which we could get volunteers to either you know, get donations or what have you to cover the, the nominal cost of the mulch. Um, I would coordinate the labor for the day of planting, and I'm also going to be attending, um, Tree Pittsburgh has a tree tenders course for $40, which I plan on attending, um, and it's December 7th. And basically it teaches you how to prune a tree, where the best place is to plant a tree, um, all kinds of crazy tree facts. But, um, so that way there's someone that knows how to do these types of things. In addition, Tree Pittsburgh will come to the site and um, do your first pruning, which does not need to happen until after two years of the tree being in the ground. Um, and basically, we would just schedule um, weeding parties and workshops for the summer, and Tree Pittsburgh helps in coordination of that as well, because they want their projects to succeed. Um, and I think that's about it. Are there any questions that I could answer or? I think there's a concern about the box. That's the big concern, right? Well, what, when we originally did the street, streetscape project and did the um, design for it, um, trees were included in the design. And then ultimately, um, after meetings and talking to business owners, um, the trees were taken out of the design. Um, we have fiber optics in some of the sidewalks up there. And right now, right now the, uh, the, the, the planting area in those logs is, is not very deep at all. It's probably, is it some down underneath there? Um, yes, I do believe so. Because what they did was, I, I think they jackhammered most of the cement, and then they left and they brought in topsoil for just those planter boxes, but they're not deep. Um, so they're not constructed um, to hold trees just because the trees were taken out of the design. So the can we leave that to a tree professional to look at specific, each specific spot and say, yes, yeah. this, this tree could could be planted here, or is that? Oh, well, absolutely. Yeah, we we can always do that. I mean, the um, a landscape design um, did come out and look at what was possible and what wasn't possible. So you know, never say no to anything, but. Um, the concern is that with the design up there now, um, is it going to be able to hold the trees? We were 29 years later before we had the sidewalk problem up there. Absolutely. And um, just to make sure that if there were trees put in there, the number, you know, number one, it wouldn't hurt that the sidewalk project because we're hopeful that it's going to stay there for many years. Sure. And um, so that's just my greatest concern that I don't, you know, um, and fiber optics and things underneath the sidewalk that are close. Um, you when know, I those did, types of when things. When I did speak with Kinsey, and I think she mentioned that at the last meeting, the, the types of trees that she has proposed for this project. Um, if they encounter any type of resistance as they're growing, they will just divert their growth. And um, so I believe it's 18 inches is what is needed for a, a good planting uh, base for the, the tree to grow. Um, but this is just a project that we would like to work with council on. So I think if we could move forward with um, basically agreeing to doing the test digs for this project and see if it's not just about the day of and digging, it's a lot of volunteer coordination, it's working with public safety to make sure that the day that the thing, the trees are planted, so it's, it's more than just, well, can't we wait a couple months and then 
decide then. So it's trying to get the wheels in motion um, and also Tree Pittsburgh, uh, letting them know whether or not this is a viable project, which they believe it is. Um, if it's not, then that grant money that they're willing to put forth for these trees um, will need to cut them loose. So I would like to see if we could move forward at this point. Um, so you're just forward. basically looking for us to be able to be fine with somebody coming out to see what out of those 28 spots will they're offering if, if we'll trees. Family put something in. Yes, and if they're not, if, if say there's only 10 spots up on Washington Avenue that you could put a tree, then you have 10 trees and you know all the trimmings for those trees. If you'd like, you've got the other trees and you can plant them somewhere else. Um, we could work with council based upon what we find and say, okay, there's another area in town that really needs some trees. Bedrooms Park, we have a lot of trees dying. So, yeah, yeah. so absolutely, or, yeah. you know, over by the caboose, or, you know, so just, it's a fluid project, but the proposed, the initial proposed 28 <coughs> spots, and it's 28 because when Tree Pittsburgh came, that's where the planting beds currently exist. So it wouldn't cost any money, and it wouldn't cost cutting into concrete and doing site prep, which would add to the, the labor cost and, and things like that. So just wanting to know if we can move forward um, with this. If, if council does decide, hey, they want to do like mm -hmm. look at the boxes in more, in more detail, mm -hmm. is there drawings or anything for the streetscape that we did that we can, they could have? I'm so, sure we can, uh, they're, I'm sure they're back in the um, so. No, that's I'm that's sure fine. That, sure I, that I know that they yeah. have stuff from Google. Yeah. No, I'm talking about like like underneath. Schematics like underneath. Yeah. 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 One thing though, before okay. I, if you said they would come out and poke around and see if it was feasible, I do the one call first before you even do that. Well, we'll do the one call and do the test digging in December. In December. That's right. Let me see. Yeah. December, January. That would happen before we start digging or poking around. And then you have to do the PA1 call seven days prior to planting because you're digging again and things may have changed from the first time to when you're currently digging. I mean, it shouldn't, <laughs> but that PA1 call is only good for seven days. So you would have to do it again before the planting. So, Lori, did you say there was some problem with the business owners that caused the trees to be taken out of the design? No, uh, well, uh, there were a few business owners that the previous trees had blocked their facades. Right. So, um, you know, not all, but some um, were preferential to not having the trees replanted because of that. So, and certainly, I mean, we want to do this to, to help Bridgeville. So, if there's input or there's people that just there's a business that's been there for 30 years and they don't want a tree, then we can move the tree. You know, it's just, it's, it's just an idea. Well, I don't know who should take precedence, but if there's someone out there who complained last time and they're still out there, maybe we could be good ahead of them. Because you hate for them to come out and cut the tree out three years later, or whatever, or whatever comes up. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, got you. I'm just looking for council approval today. Yes. If you are sure. If you are sure. If there are trees. If there are trees and there are trees. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you. We can take a motion or a little one. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I asked for one. I had one. Okay, there you go. So, can I take a motion? You can take a motion. Of course. Okay. To allow trees over Pittsburgh to come and evaluate the boxes. You see. The possibility of trees over Bridgeport. Is there a second? I second. You know, second? Yeah. All those in favor? I'm going to abstain from this vote. That's all right. Aye. 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 All those opposed? They're not recording. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have another visitor. Um, Stephanie Pateski. Hi. Hi. My problem sounds so trivial compared to all these people. Lori, we spoke today. I just wanted to make sure that I came tonight and that my problem was on the agenda. And it is? Well, you, you always have the opportunity to bring, to bring um, your issue up here. I just wanted to talk to the council address you about um, changing an ordinance about excessive signage. 
I have a neighbor that if you go down in my driveway, there's 10 no trespassing signs, like right there. Like as long as this table is, put 10 no trespassing signs and that's what it looks like. So I know St. Clair has an ordinance, only one sign in the yard, and I wouldn't care if you put a sign back there. But 10 is excessive. And I'm gonna be selling that house shortly and it just looks really bad. I wonder why. <laughs> which, which, trespassing. which street? Oh, no dumping all. Somebody right. dumped back there. He said the brick matches my house. Which street? New York Street. The house, the property owner that has the signs on it lives on Pennsylvania. Okay. Is it the circle or the? Uh, I live on the yeah. circle. I live here. His house is on <coughs> Pennsylvania, okay. and he owns a strip right behind my house. Okay. That I maintained all summer. Okay. And when will we get the house clean? Yeah, I'll talk to Tom yeah. regarding because we, we really just don't have anything regarding personal yeah. signs yeah. on yeah. private yeah. property. Yeah, exactly. So we'll, we'll have there are as frustrating as it can be. First Amendment issues on private property, residential property owners, signs, numbers of signs, and speech and whatnot. So be prepared. So that's the There's much case law by irritating signage in neighbors' yards and the types of children. That's why I wanted to the ordinance change that the clerk will change that. The Constitution supersedes the ordinances. So we can't enact an unconstitutional ordinance, nor can we enforce a, a legal ordinance in an unconstitutional manner. That's why so even if you change the ordinance, he could fight it and say... Yeah, or we would not be empowered to enact an unconstitutional ordinance. But we'll take a look at I was looking questions. at the Pennsylvania law. One of the guidelines is that for personal signs that one so many 22,000 square foot. And again, there are many statutes and ordinances and regulations <coughs> that are, don't always comport the Constitution. Okay. We'll look at it. Thanks, Lord. Okay, thank you. All right. <clears throat> On to the regular meeting. Um, no business. Uh, motion of the Borough Council to approve the October 14, 2019 regular meeting minutes as submitted. That's yes, so That was uh, Bruce. He was put in my ear. And <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to Borough Council to approve the November 2019 bill list. I'll move. Uh, and Virginia Schneider. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to Borough Council to approve the November 15, 22, 29, December 6, 2019 payroll. So moved. Uh, Jim Bosmo. And Bruce, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Aye. All motion carries. Motion to Borough Council approving the advertisement of the 2020 budget workshop meeting to be held on November 19, 2019 at 6 p.m. I'll move. Uh, Joe Ritchie and Nino, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to Borough Council approving the advertisement of the 2020 proposed budget to be available for public inspection Monday, November 25th, 2019. Advertisement will meet the exceeded will meet and exceed the 10-day uh, public review requirement per code. I'll move. Was that Joe? Yep. Second. And you know, all those in favor? Yeah. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion regarding resolution number 2019-14, the borough council setting the police pension fund contributions to fund the short, shortfall evidenced by an independent uh, actuarial study as permitted by previous ordinance and the police collective bargaining agreement. So moved. Uh, Bill Henderson and Bruce Carucci, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, before we get to the next one, there's an insert one here. Uh, demolition of 416 Darby Way, that's the building next door. 
I quote that I've been requested from four demolition companies with three responses received uh, this morning for the demolition of the building adjacent to the municipal building at 416 Darby Way. Bids were received as follows. Uh, contractor Shape Excavating Contract Incorporated, the best list of removal is $4,973. Demolition, $14,860 for a total of $19,833. Uh, Minifield Construction Services Incorporated, asbestos removal of $4,200. Demolition of $1,600 for a total bid of $20,200. And uh, Continental Construction and Demolition LLC, uh, including the demo bid uh, total uh, asbestos is included for a total of $25,500. Uh, we know that Trushy did not uh, submit a bid. Um, based on these bidget, bid, 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 uh, we would uh, like to propose that uh, shape excavating contractor be accepted. So uh, Bruce? Second. And Nino, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> uh, motion to go to council regarding the following real estate tax refund duty changes in the assessment as requested by the real estate tax collector. Uh, copies of the official change orders have been attached to the request. Uh, year 2019, Mock 322-C-71, the amount of $204.67 uh, to John and Stetlana Vogel. So moved. Uh, Bruce? I'll second. And Bill Anderson, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept and pay any commissions due to the October 2019 real estate collect tax collector report. I'll move. I <laughs> true. And Bruce, uh, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Yes. Motion carries. Motion to accept the September 2019 Treasurer's Report. I'll move. Uh, Joe Rucci? Second. Uh, Nino? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the October 2019 Police Report. So moved. Uh, Bill Henderson? Second. And Joe Possible, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries and motion to accept the November 2019 zone report. So moved. Uh, it's a bill. Yeah. Second. And Virginia. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Committee reports. Bruce? Uh, administration? I don't, I don't have any. Just thanks for Lori being back. And, yeah. And at least halfway out to help her. Uh -huh. She's smiling, so they're stepping in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, Finance. Uh, as everybody can see, we're having a meeting on November 19th at 6 o'clock, uh, budget workshop. Uh, I asked the council to please bring any thoughts and ideas. Uh, we had a uh, committee meeting, was that last week? Last week, and a lot of good conversations, a lot of positive uh, conversations, uh, a lot of different alternative things that we could do. So we'll uh, be bringing some of those ideas and thoughts and all kinds of fun stuff for that meeting. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Parks and Recreation. Other Joe. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, real quickly, uh, all the water's been shut off in the parks. Uh, if you want to check out Cook School, it's pretty accessible. At the chart tiers, they can generally lock that off and also look off and run. So. Also, the restroom, the new restroom found in uh, McLaughlin's about 50 to 60 percent completed, and it should be done for the spring. That's all I have. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Public Works, Nino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You did have the report, but just not the light of, uh, of what Public Works has done. Plenty of things. A lot of asphalt, a lot of, a lot of curbs. Because the water, they just keep on going to the property center. So we put quite a few curbs and they took care of quite a bit of the problem. Clean catch bases 
and then we collected the leaf, and I'm sure everyone of you saw that, and vehicles repair and maintenance of public work, and et cetera, et cetera. All, all that on the, uh, the paragraph, it's all on, on that, on the uh, vehicle uh, public work. Uh, we maintained the creek at a certain distance, we took a lot of the, uh, the breeze out of it, and uh, let's hope that it can help when the bed was in. We don't just do it now, we do what we like to do. So we do that pretty often. Uh, there was something else. Oh, we have, we have three trucks full of uh, salt. I hope we are not here. <laughs> but they're ready to go. Okay. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, public safety, Bill Henderson. Um, working with the chief and, and uh, getting ready for next year's budget. <clears throat> line items that we're looking to uh, address. Um, I've done a budget meeting ready for that. Uh, also, a plug to the fire department. I know they've got some fundraising activity. Um, I'm not sure if you're going to talk about that a little bit, Mike, but uh, yeah. right, I'll pass that on to you then. <coughs> Shameless plug for those guys as well. So, that's it. All right, thanks. Uh, Madam Mayor. Thank you. I'm thankful for all of you and I'm praying that you're going to have a happy holiday season with your loved ones this Thanksgiving and we ask your prayers for those families who will be missing their loved ones this first Thanksgiving. On November 19th I'll be speaking to Christian mothers at St. Barbara's Church and they have, they are raising 800, well, last year they gave 800 pairs of white socks to uh, Mercy Hospital, and the, the doctor there and the nurses distributed them to the homeless people under bridges and things like that. And this year, St. Barbara's Christian Mothers are hoping to come up with 1,000. So if you care to donate some white socks, we would very much appreciate that. And also, by hours is also having stockings that you could fill for a soldier or any armed forces person and they would appreciate your stopping picking up the stock and filling it and bringing it back to them and they will then see that it gets to where it needs to be so thank you very much thank you madam mayor uh police chief is not here tom you have your report yeah uh, Okay. Yeah, we did submit our report dated uh, November 6th. Um, I do additional items other than what's listed in the report. Thank you very much. Uh, Chief Custain's not here, but Mike's here. Okay, so, well, <clears throat> last month we had a total of 34 calls. Uh, 11 of those calls were assisting DMS with one vehicle accident, five were uh, alarms from CO to uh, fire alarms. And a number of other different ones from the wires down the smoke, uh, assistant to police, and just you know, you know, different calls I get. Also, want to point out uh, for this weekend, we're gonna have uh, one of our fundraiser beer bands. So, if everybody wants a night out, you know, you can hang out in the fire hall. We have a band, it's called Wound Up, it's gonna be there. It's from uh, starts at 6, goes to 11 o'clock. Um, the band starts at eight. All food and you know your drinks will be uh, provided. Your tickets they're twenty dollars a piece. So it's a great, great night out. If anybody wants tickets, we have some or contact your what's it? Proceeds. Oh uh, yeah. All the uh, well, thank you, Jim. All the proceeds from the dinner dance goes towards the uh, family on Union Street. I think in August they had a house fire that they lost uh, everything. So all the proceeds from this go directly to them help them uh, rebuild and establish what they had. Uh, the other ticket we have is called uh, Slave Full of Cash. It goes off uh, Christmas Day, so Santa Claus can bring you guys an extra Christmas gift this year, $10,000. Um, that ticket's also $20. Um, so see any fire department or me or whoever, fire number, uh, here's your tickets. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Virtual Historical Society, Mary. 
Excuse me. Very quickly, I just wanted to mention this is Veterans Month, and therefore, you're all invited. All of you are invited the last Tuesday night of this month, which I think is the 26th. Uh, it will be at the fire hall in the big room there. And it's a very interesting program. The young woman who is a government worker and is writing a book about three men from Bridgeville who were taken prisoner in World War II and came back home alive and well. One is Pete Calibro from Calibro Tire. Uh, the girl herself is directly descended from an Abood, a Mr. Abood, the Syrian families, and then his cousin was taken prisoner, different plane, but the same thing. They all ended up at the same place in a Nazi prison camp. And in honor of them, she has done many, many hours of research. And she is coming from D.C. to speak to us the last Tuesday night of this month. So please, thanking the veterans who are back and, and who have done so much for us, please try to come and join us. Uh, then we will wish you a very Merry Christmas because we don't meet very much. But there's one change. On Saturday, December 7th, we will again be open from 12 till 3, and we would like families, visitors, please come see what we're up to. We are outgrowing our space, I will tell you that. Thank you very much. All of you have great holidays. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Um, virtual library. Good evening. Uh, ben Hornfeck, library director. I just wanted to come by tonight and give you a little overview of what the library has been up to this year so far. Um, so some of the numbers I pulled to share with you, this, uh, as of today, we have 4,251 registered users at the library. Um, this year we've circulated 122,794 items, that's a variety of print and digital items. Um, we've offered 824 programs with attendance at 11,011 people. Um, of that, I think I mentioned last time around, we hired a new outreach individual that is specifically going out in the community to serve daycares and preschools. So in the last two months, um, she has visited nine facilities and seen 1,123 kids and adults in, in that time. Um, and then also this year, as far as the use of the library, we've seen 13,798 sessions. So that is people using either our physical computers in the library or coming to the library to use our wireless. Um, and that's resulted in over a million minutes of internet time at the library alone. Um, and it's happy and I to report those numbers to you. That's only half of what the library does. Um, the more important part is the people interactions that we have. I had intended to show a quick video from our Love Your Library Month. Um, unfortunately, there were technical difficulties. But Essentially, at the end of September, on Sunday, September 29th, we had a uh, um, Yard Family Fun Day and Yard Game. So it was at the library and back of the library. The board um, took the lead on organizing it, and we had a really nice turnout. Um, the video is incredible. It's on our social media, and maybe I can see floor. You can email it out. But it was made by one of our board members and his fiance um, to promote the library and promote Love Your Library, um, which is every September to help raise funds for the library and just promote the library's mission. And I'm happy to report this year for Love Your Library, we raised over $13,000. Um, so I just want to thank the borough for your continued support and ask that you keep us in mind as your upcoming budget season approaches. And then finally, I just wanted to mention um, our friends of the library group every year host our Christmas Tree Festival. So that's coming up once again. It starts Monday, December 2nd and goes through Saturday, December 14th. Um, during that time on Friday, December 13th, there's an adult-only event that'll um, have wine tasting and chocolate tasting. It's from 6.30 to 9 on Friday, December 13th. And then Saturday, December 14th from 11 to 3 is the family afternoon where there'll be Santa and music and you can come and see all the different trees. The trees, um, anyone can make one, business, organization, families, individuals, um, and then they're on display throughout the month of December. 
So, thank you. Thanks, Ben. Anybody here from the parking authority? Uh, planning Commission. No, I, uh, no, Mr. Chairman, the only thing I, uh, I like to say to Pat, he had been having this guy today. I mean, two people, I was checking with the attorney at the time when he said that, because that was the truth. Actually, it, it's in a broad part of code, isn't it? That if it, the format's not there, actually, you don't have to. Well, yeah, I think that's a recommended ball. Recommended by the ball of the sunshine, that's exactly what you Yes. So, this is a difficulty. I mean, I mean, we could come socially here at any time. There's no problem. You know. I, I, it's fine with you. Especially me, I like to get out of the house. So, but there are only two buys they what's available in the last month. I and Mrs. Simmerall. All the other members, you were out of town and more. Yeah, that's exactly right. They mm -hmm. were all out of town. And so that's about all I can answer you, Pat. Uh, yes, go ahead. Can I ask a question? Is it a better mechanism to let people know that, that our meetings have been canceled? Well, being an elected official here too, I kept in touch with our secretary uh, at the office. It's happened at the last minute. Even if it was a better mechanism, we would have the time to to send it out. So sometimes it just happened the night before. We really thought we had a corn when it spoke to And then only once, no, we got another call. And you and I were the only one who were present. Uh, so I say, we actually call support, yes and no. You know what I mean? Any of you? Put a sign up front so that some of us that ride by can see that there's no planning commission meeting tonight. Because at least that would. Uh, yeah, we can do some alert like that. We the sign that you have there uh, in the lobby, <laughs> just move out of the side. If I might, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. This is the longest report about a no report, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> As I indicated, I knew that there was not a planning commission meeting. This is not a complaint about notification. This is a comment not just about this last meeting, it is a comment about a pattern and practice. Okay? It is ongoing and has been happening for more than five years. You tried very hard by expanding to seven members, and yet, it does not occur. Okay? I got you. So, my hope, and I think others' hope, is that when you toss the coin, Mr. Petricelli, that you come up with coming down and socializing. That, that, that's what we would have to call it. And that would be, it would not be a quorum, but you would actually be here. Lori, manager report? Um, I provided my written report for your review. If you have any comments? Um, also, I would just like to thank council support during my trying time these past months, and the staff, Cheryl, for being invaluable to me because it's made all the difference. So thank you all. You're welcome. Thank you. Glad to see you back. Now, old business. Um, I'm thank you. We had a great bake sale, and I had the chairman of the bake sale was here. Um, 1305 is the most we've ever done so far. And they will aim for more. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, an old business, I hate to do this, but for the last three months, I've been saying to somebody to call Pando. We know they're not going to do that this year. I haven't got any response at all. And I'm just about to call myself as a, a resident of this town. At least maybe we can get a, an answer when, maybe, maybe next season, maybe two years from now. For what? <laughs> to do ministry. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 ministry is very bad. Yeah, so there's three months I've been asking about it. 
Lori might have a comment. I actually talked to them gotcha. in, uh, at the beginning of the year and to see if Bank Street was on on, on their on their program yeah. because we had actually been doing patching and we were a bit tired of doing it. It's and nice. they had told me that they knew the condition, but it was not on this year's, uh, right. this past year's um, program. So, you know, we contact them again and see. See, please. Right. That, I mean, the resident, uh, they, they, they would like to know. We'd yeah. be patching. Well, just not yeah. enough. Yeah, they just said they had words, roads that were in a lot worse condition than they For sure. We said that for Bridgeville to our residents, too. We know how it works. Yeah. Anybody else have any old business? I do. I wanted to ask Kevin. We talked about Churchers Park and the erosion of the roadway. Um, yeah. Were we going to look at that? I didn't see it in the report. I thought that was something. Yeah, we did take a look at you it. You did take a look at it? Yeah, and there was a uh, permit that was previously filed. It's expired. Um, so it does take another uh, permit. Um, mm -hmm. And I think you've had uh, some funding requests in on that. That may be one we can actually submit to some of our own. Because this summer there are some extra on the CFA funding. So I'm going to go and look at that. I got another grant you guys got to look at too. So, well, I wanted to mention a gentleman that I met from Upper St. Clair recently that talked about um, the, the creek bed that was worked on across the way over by the B&L um, mm -hmm. craft on the, in the Berska Park okay. where they had, they had erosion and they had built that up with concrete or whatever material it is that they used. And he was a hydraulics expert and he said you should look at that because it changes the trajectory of that water which is now the reason why he feels that we have the erosion on our side. I um, wasn't sure he thought, and, or you know, the state was involved in that, but somebody else that I spoke to did not think. They thought that that was a private job that was done by the company across the creek. So I didn't know about that. I just thought I would share that information and, and maybe they can help repair what's been happening. Okay. Thank you. Any other old business? New business. Motion to adjourn. So Second. 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 Second.